Hi guys, welcome back to Kim's class. I'm so happy you've come to learn English with me. Today, we're going to continue our lessons on idioms and slang. Let's review what an idiom is and what is slang. So remember that an idiom is a group of words that when we use them together, it means something very different than the individual words by themselves. Idioms are very commonly known with people who speak English as their first language. It's a little different than what slang is. So slang is also a group of words or an individual word that is informal. It's used in speech and not in writing, and it's usually used with a particular group of people. So it's not commonly known through all groups of people. For example, teenagers have slang. So those are very different, but yet they're a little bit the same. And we're going to both learn slang and idioms in these lessons. Remember also that each one of these lessons have objectives. Objectives are lessons that I'm hoping that you will understand or know by the end of the lesson. For example, in this lesson, you will understand and use common English slang and idioms. You're going to get a practice listening to idioms, speaking with idioms, and even some writing with idioms. Another objective for this lesson is to know the difference between teacher talk and street talk. So sometimes when a teacher speaks to you in an English class, you understand most of what they're saying. That's because they speak at a speed that's not too slow, but slow enough for you to understand. They also speak clearly and enunciate most of their words. After an English class, you might leave feeling like, I can understand English. And then you go to work, or you listen to people in the grocery store, or try to have conversations with your English-speaking friends, and you think, what did they say? I don't understand. And sometimes that's because they use street talk or a different way to pronounce things. So each lesson will also have examples of street talk. For example, in this particular lesson, we will be talking about this type of street talk. So today's vocabulary, remember, these aren't words that you can look up in your translator and get a good definition for. Because these are idioms or slang words, their meanings are very different. Let's talk about today's idioms and slang that we'll be practicing in our theme of the market. Today's vocabulary are words that go along with the theme at the market. Now remember, you can't look up these words in your translator. It won't help you at all. Because these words are idioms or slang, their meaning is very different. Let's look at the words for today's lesson. The first word you see is the word checkers. You try it. Checkers. Checkers is a person or a cashier in the supermarket. Checkers are the ones who take your money. They're called checkers. Here's an example sentence. Look at that long line. They need more checkers. The next vocabulary word is from scratch. You try it. From scratch. From scratch means to make something with all fresh ingredients, not from the box. An example sentence says, I made this cake from scratch. I did not use a box. 
The next word is mouth water. You try it, mouth water. Mouth water means when you think about good food and you really want to eat it. An example sentence says, the smell of that cake is making my mouth water. The next group of words is pick up. You try it, pick up. Pick up means to buy something. Example, I'm going to the store. Do you need me to pick up anything for you? Pick up. Then we have the word veggies. You try it, veggies. Veggies is just short for the word vegetables. Here's an example sentence. I always try to eat my veggies. Let's look here. We have the words ring up. You try it, ring up. Ring up means when a cashier scans an item and the price is entered into the cash register. For example, I'm finished shopping. I'm going to the register to ring up my groceries. Ring up. Let's look at the next word. Rip off. You try it. Rip off. Rip-off means when the price of something is much higher than it should be. Example sentence, you paid a thousand dollars for that shirt? That's a rip-off. I found the same shirt for twenty dollars. Rip-off. This group of words is rock bottom. You try it. Rock bottom. Rock bottom means when the price of something is as low as possible. Example sentence, I'm going to buy a new car today. The prices of cars are at rock bottom. The next group of words is slash prices. You try it, slash prices. Slash prices means to make the price of something lower than it was before. For example, if they want to sell those radios, they better slash prices. Slash prices. The last group of words is to die for. Sounds scary, doesn't it? To die for. You try it. To die for. To die for means to describe something very good that you want. Let's try an example. This cake is to die for. I can't stop eating it. To die for. So now that you have seen all of our words for this lesson, and the definitions, I want you to try a little matching activity. When you look at the screen, you're going to see a group of letters with definitions and our words from today's lesson. Try to match the letter of the definition that goes with one of our new vocabulary words. Ready to try it? Okay. So let's talk again about teacher talk versus street talk. We talked about this in the last lesson, but I think it's good to understand that sometimes when a teacher speaks, we think we understand lots of things. And then we go out to work or on the street or in the grocery store or with our English speaking friends and we can't understand what they're saying. The reason why is they are two different types of speaking. They sound very different. And so in today's lesson, we're going to talk about when the letter T sounds like a T and makes the T 
sound. And when the letter T sounds like the D sound. It can be very confusing when you hear words that have the D sound and they don't sound like a teacher when a teacher uses the T sound. Let's look at some examples. Here we have the sentence and it says, look at this pantry selection. The word at sounds like a T. Simple, right? But when you look at this sentence that says, talk about rock bottom prices. Did you hear that? Rock bottom. It has the D sound. We know that a teacher would say bottom, but that's not what they sound like on the street. You hear bottom with a D. Let's look at another example. Here's a sentence. It says, okay, but let's hurry. The word but has the T and it sounds like a T, but. But now let's look at this sentence. Great idea. Did you hear that? Great idea. The word great has a T, but it sounds like a D. I'm gonna give you one more example and then Ollie will explain to you why we do that. The last example, look at this sentence. We can get the checker to ring up our purchases. The word get, spelled with a T, get. It also sounds like a T, get. But now look at this example. Just look at all these cakes. The word at is spelled with a T, but what you hear is, just look at all these cakes. Just look at all these cakes. It sounds like a D. Why is that? Well, you might just think that it's lazy mouths. Well, there's a little bit of that, but there is actually a reason why you hear these sounds very differently. It has to do with vowels and where the T is located. We should know that a vowel is a letter like A, E, I, O, U. Those are vowels. When the letter T is between only one vowel or no vowel, then it keeps the T sound. So let's look at this sentence again. We have the sentence, look at this. You will notice that the T is in between the letter A in at and the letter T in this. So that's between one vowel and one consonant. It makes the sound T, at. But if you look at the word at in this sentence, just look at all these cakes. Again, the word is at, it's spelled with a T, but it sounds like a D. Well, let's look where the T is in this sentence. What letter is before the T? It's an A. What's letter after the T? It's an A. Those two are vowels. So when the T is between two vowels, it makes the D sound. Just look at all these cakes. Just look at all the cakes, at all the cakes. Now let's look at the word in the sentence here. The sentence says, okay, but let's hurry. The word but sounds with the T. What letter is before the T? A U, a U is a vowel, but look at what letter comes after the T. It's an L, so this sentence the word but has the T sound. How about when we use the expression, great idea? Did you hear it? Great idea. The word great is spelled with a T, but we say D. Why? I think you're getting the hang of it. Right before it, you see the vowel A, 
and right after it, you see the vowel I. That is why it says great idea instead of teacher talk, great idea. Let's look at another example. Here's the sentence, we can get the checker. We can get the checker. The word get has a T and it sounds like a T. What letters before the T? The vowel E. What letters after the T? A consonant T. Therefore, the word get sounds like get with a T. Let's look at this last example. Rock bottom prices. Did you hear that? Rock bottom prices. Here we have two T's that sound like two D's. Bottom. Why do we say that? What letter is before the two D's or T's? It's the letter O. And what letter is after the two T's? Also the letter O. So because these T's are in between two vowels, it makes the D sound. Let's practice these words. Bottom. Great idea. Look at all the cake. I think you're getting the hang of it. It's not just T's and D's that can be confusing. Sometimes we have words that sound different even though they're spelled the same. In this lesson, we're gonna continue talking about when we use past tense verbs and the three sounds that come with past tense verbs. So you probably know that most regular verbs in the past tense end in ed. For example, yesterday I played soccer. Played ends in ed. This is how we make verbs that are regular into the past tense. Sounds pretty easy, just add ed. But what's not easy is that past tense verbs, even though spelled with ed at the end, have three, yes, three different sounds. Sometimes a past tense word like played is one syllable and it has the d sound, played. Hear that? One syllable has a d. Sometimes though, past tense verbs sound like a T. For example, think of the past tense word talked. Talked is spelled just like played with an ED, but it has the T sound. It's not talked, it's talked with the T sound. And then sometimes we have words that end in ED that sound just like we'd like them to. Id. For example, the word wanted. That has an ID sound. So let's go over that again. Played. D sound. Talked. T sound. And wanted. ID sound. Why is that? Well, it's not to make things confusing, even though it is. There is actually a rule to help us understand if it's the D sound, the T sound, or the ID sound. So listen carefully as you look for the explanation and I read it to you. When an ED is added to a regular verb to form the past tense, it can be pronounced D, T, or I, D. Let's look at some examples. Here are some words that make the D sound. Played tennis, traveled to Paris, ordered lunch, delivered pizza, happened today. That comes after a voiced sound. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
Now, there's also words that make the T sound. For example, slashed prices, talked to him, dressed nicely, reduced cost, increased sales. The third way that past tense verbs that are regular sound is with an ID. For example, decided, added, wanted, needed, visited. These sounds come after a T or a D. Look at the word added. It has a D, so it makes the id sound. Look at the word want. It ends in a T, so therefore the sound for the past tense is wanted. What about needed? That word ends in a D, so it makes the id sound. So guys, that's the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed your learning as much as I enjoyed teaching. Let's review our objectives and make sure that we have learned what I hope you would have learned. So our first objective, can you use common English slang and idioms around the market or around shopping? Hope you can. Do you know the difference between teacher talk, which sounds like me because I'm a teacher, and street talk, which sounds like the people that you work with or you see at the grocery store or your friends who English is their first language? I think you got it. And do you know when to use the t sound in words and when to use the d sound? We've spent time on that. You can always watch this video again if you think that you need more practice. And do you understand that regular past tense verbs that end in ed have three different sounds? That one will take some work, but I know you got a great start. So guys, I appreciate you coming to Kim's class. And like always, I very much appreciate going on this journey with you to learn English. Bye.